Hello again everyone, um, it's Mitch again. This is my 1925 Ford Model T which I imported from America in 2011. Um, I had a request from a YouTube user whose username escapes me at the moment. Um, the request was uh, to produce a video to demonstrate how to change gear while the car's in motion. Um, so that's what this video will be about. There'll be a live demonstration um, while the car is in motion, how to change gear and so forth. Um, and I've also included some um, safe starting tips as well, which I omitted from the first video. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the car's been restored since uh, the first video was produced. Um, as you can see, the, the roof has uh, been done. Um, the car's also um, registered now, so I can legally take it on the road. Um, I had the roof upholstery done by a very skilled um, upholsterer near where I live. Um, I wasn't about to attempt it myself, not being an upholsterer. It would have looked uh, terrible if I'd have done it. Um, and the only other things I've really done to it is uh, the uh, wheels have been repainted. Um, the engine's had a good tune-up. Um, so basically this car is now back to um, original spec. Okay, now before we begin, I'll just um, like to go over some um, safe starting procedures for the Model T. Um, I do demonstrate how to start the Model T in the first, uh, my first video on YouTube, but I think I need to revise it and go over it again um, because there were one or two points which I have missed. Okay, so the things that you need to do um, first uh, to make sure that the car is not going to run over you, particularly if you're going to be hand starting it, um, is we need to, uh, first of all in the cab, um, we need to set the spark advance lever all the way in the retarded position. Um, if you don't do that, the engine could um, backfire when you go to start it, and that's how people end up with um, broken arms, wrists and so forth. And the other thing you want to do is, well obviously we don't want the throttle open that much, uh, and at the same time we don't want it all the way uh, closed as well. We want the throttle opened just a little bit like that. The other thing we want to do is make sure that our parking brake, this is the parking brake down here, we want to make sure that that's pushed all the way back, um, obviously so the car can't move. Now. In my first video I actually demonstrate to you how to do uh, how to start the Model T from cold so I won't be demonstrating it in this one so we'll just do um, a uh, hot start um, as well I don't have much choice because the engine is rather hot at the moment I've been driving it around okay so we've retarded our spark here we've opened the throttle maybe a quarter of the way down the quadrant here just here and we've set our parking brake so that it's engaged and the transmission is in neutral. Now this particular car um, is equipped with uh, electric start. Um, again, I demonstrated that in the first video, so we won't do that one again. Um, what we want to do now is I'm going to switch this to battery for starting. Um, even when you're hand cranking, you can, you can start on battery or magneto. Battery just makes it uh, easier. So we turn it to battery and you can hear the uh, coil boxes buzzing underneath the dash there in that box there and now we're ready to start now I've just switched the key off for a moment what we'll do first, we'll go around to the front of the car and I'll give you a little safety, a few safety tips um, for the starting handle itself now you might recall if you've seen the first video that I tell you to start the car using your left hand. Now you definitely only want to use your left hand um, because uh, the engine, uh, because it rotates in um, a clockwise direction, um, as I say, if you use your right hand to start it and the engine backfires, there is a good chance that you'll end up with a broken wrist. Um, so what happens is, by starting it with your left hand, if the engine does backfire, um, what will happen is it'll throw your hand away from the starting handle so that you still have your wrist intact. Okay, so once you've locked in the crank like so, it's important to only cup the uh, starting handle in your hand as I'm doing here. 
definitely do not hold it like this because again if the engine backfires you're not going to be able to let go of that handle quick enough and you're likely to end up with a broken thumb so keep your thumb well out of the way cup the hand the starting handle in your hand like this and that's the correct way um, to uh, to crank it so now I'll give you a demo Okay, so now we've made all of our internal checks. Starting the car, we engage the crank like so, and you can feel it's locked in. Keep your thumb out of the way of the starting handle, and as I showed you, the correct way to hold the starting handle, and then... And now you can hear the engine sounds a bit rough, so what we're going to do now is return to the cab, and we're going to advance the spark. Okay, so we go back to the cab. And you can hear the engine running quite rough, so what we do is we advance the spark. And you can hear the engine running much smoother. And it should be quite happy with the engine completely idle, like so. Okay, so if you've seen my first um, YouTube video about the Model T, um, you'd have seen um, I went through what all the controls do. Um, but if you haven't, just to recap, we have the handbrake on the left-hand side of the picture there. Um, and then down the bottom with the, with the pedals, we have the uh, clutch pedal on the left-hand side, the reverse pedal in the middle, and the brake pedal on the right and I'll show you how to use each of those now. I'll just get over into the driver's side. So when we want to pull forward, we step on the low pedal, the um, clutch pedal, which puts the car into low gear. Now to get high gear, we put the handbrake all the way forward, and then we release the clutch. I'll show you in a moment what that looks like in practice when we're actually driving. So we'll go through that again. When the car's stopped, you always pull the handbrake back. So that locks the parking brake, and it also locks the transmission in, into neutral so the car can't go anywhere. So when you want to pull away, you push the handbrake to the vertical position, so it's at 90 degrees to the floor, and you step on your clutch pedal, which puts the car into low gear. When you want to change up into high gear, basically you push the handbrake lever all the way forward and release the clutch. So that's the actual shifting gears part. There is of course more to it than that, you have to um, set your throttle as well, which is similar to a modern car, um, so probably best if I just give you a live demo. Now it is quite a hot day today so I'm not actually going to get out and crank the car. I could but uh, it is, as I say it is quite hot so I'm going to cheat today. We're going to use the electric start, turn it over to battery. This car being 1925 it has um, an electric starter as well as hand crank. So you can see battery over here to the left and then once the engine's running we quickly switch the key over to magneto so we're not using our battery. Okay, so now we're ready to start. We'll turn the key to battery. Just about open the throttle. Now you have to forgive me because I usually have two hands to do this because what we have to do is once the engine starts is actually adjust the spark as well so it's not coughing and spluttering. So I'll do this as best as I can. My foot's on the starter button. No, nope, that didn't start that time. We'll try again. Need to give it a bit more throttle. There we go. And once the engine started, we'll switch over to Magneto. And that's the engine running, right. Now, to pull away, as I explained previously when the engine was off, always a good idea, like you do in a modern car, is put your foot on the brake just in case you're, or if you are parked on a slope. We'll now push the handbrake to neutral. I can take my foot off the brake now because I'm not actually, I'm actually parked on flat ground, so that's all right. 
We give it a bit more throttle. And then we step firmly on the clutch pedal. Trying to do this with one hand is not easy. So you would have heard just then that the engine was, when I took my foot off the clutch and the car was just rolling, the engine revved quite a lot. And obviously you wouldn't get that in a modern car because you just take your foot off the accelerator pedal. But obviously the Model T not having an accelerator, um, you have to operate the throttle. So when you come off the pedal and you want to stop, it's important to set the throttle back to idle. Now reversing is very simple. Just like when you step on the left pedal to go forwards in low gear, we put the handbrake in the middle position, open the throttle a little bit, and to go backwards, we simply step on the reverse pedal. And on the right pedal to stop. And whenever you want to stop, pull the handbrake back and your parking brake's engaged and you're in neutral. Okay, now we'll go for a drive and I shall try and show you how to change gear while we're moving. And you can see I push the spark advance lever down. You don't want it retarded once the engine's running, otherwise we really listen. It sounds a bit rough, so we advance that and then you can quite safely back off the throttle. Now looking over at the key again, you can see it's um, on battery at the moment. I'll switch that over to magneto so we're not using the battery at all. And now we're ready to pull away. So what we do is we set the handbrake to neutral, which is in the middle there. So all the way back is engaged, in the middle is neutral. <coughs> we increase the throttle a bit, and then we'll step on the left pedal to pull away. moving in low gear, to get high gear, we push the handbrake lever all the way forward, get a little bit more speed, and what we do is we briefly take the throttle back to nothing, and then we take our foot off the left pedal. So in practice, this is what it looks like. And now we're in high gear. And when we want to stop, we push the left pedal in halfway, we push it in neutral, back the throttle off, and then we can just simply step on the brake, which is the right pedal. And then we can pull the handbrake back and take our feet off the pedals. When you're climbing a hill, what you've got to remember is the timing on the Model T is um, another thing which is manual. In other words, you have to do it yourself. Unlike a modern car where the timing of the spark is controlled by the car itself, on a Model T it's controlled by the driver. And when you're climbing a hill, um, it's a little bit different to just normal driving. Normal driving, you'll be going along with your throttle open and you'll be just cruising along nicely. But when you want to climb a hill, that's a little bit different. You need to reduce the timing, in other words, you need to retard the spark, which is done with this lever on the left-hand side here, I just the steering wheel. Done with this lever on the left-hand side here, or on the right-hand side, um, if you have um, a Canadian-built Model T, um, which obviously has the steering wheel on the other side. Um, however, on this one, it's on the, it's on the left-hand side, um, as all the American ones were. So anyway, when you want to climb a hill, um, we need to obviously leave, leave the revs as they are. So if, you're, if your engine revs are about there when you're driving along, that's fine. You may need a little bit more revs depending on how steep the hill is. But the important thing to remember when you want to start climbing a hill is to retard the spark. And what that does is it stops the engine from overheating. And uh, to that end, it also stops it from laboring as well. 
Um, if you leave the spark fully advanced when you are climbing a hill, uh, there is a highly increased risk of breaking your crankshaft, which obviously you don't want to do because it is a very, uh, it can be a difficult job to put a new one in, particularly if you break one of the three main bearings. So for climbing hills, we always retard the spark. You can still increase the revs, but it's always important to retard the spark for hill climbs. And then when you're going back down the other side of the hill, remember to advance your spark again. And depending on how steep it is, you may also want to reduce your revs as well, which is with your throttle on the right. Now, since you last saw my Model T, I have um, made a small addition on the front here in the form of this um, motor meter, which is actually a temperature gauge. And I've had to switch the engine off just now because, as you can see, um, the engine is uh, running somewhat hot. It is quite a hot day today. And um, when I was showing you uh, the uh, uh, hill climbing procedure just now, the, um, I had the engine running just on tick over, which for a long period of time, Model T's didn't really like that. So, uh, as you can see, the engine has uh, got rather hot. Not a, not to the point of overheating. It's it's in the um, it's in the summer zone there. So that's uh, in inside that uh, those black lines you can see top and bottom there. But uh, yeah, she is quite hot. So uh, I think I might go and put the car back in the shed shortly.